Okay, today's SDC address is going to be uh, inspired by, first of all, the Betty book. I was reading uh, 40 Years of Psychic Research by Hamlin Garland, and towards the end of this, he uh, talked about uh, Stuart Edward White. Apparently they were friends, and um, I didn't realize that Stuart Edward White was part of the American uh, Psychic Research Society, or whatever they called it, um, in San Francisco, the branch for San Francisco branch for the Psychical Research Society, not to be confused with the Society for Psychical Research. Anyway, um, and I ran across this. I'm kind of studying this as a guide to my meditation, and uh, I ran across this passage where it really started to sound like the Urantia book, when the Urantia book talks about the evolving soul, and of course so do the other sources, but not in those terms necessarily. Anyway, so I'll read this paragraph. It says, The spiritual body, we are assured, is indestructible. It may be, as Betty saw it, crippled, embryonic, incomplete, but such as it is, it endures. Furthermore, whatever we may add to it in the way of development is an everlasting possession. We may go our ways deliberately blind, deliberately neglectful, willfully procrastinating, self-centered, even antagonistic, these things may form over our real selves a crust that will stop growth. They act on us, they may act on us, and on others about us in unguessed ways through long vistas of time. Their effects we will have to liquidate when, with compound interest. Their iron construction we will have to dissolve before again we can expand. But they cannot destroy. Whatever of the spiritual body is in ourselves even in crudest embryo, is ours forever, on which some time or other, when we have resolved ourselves free, we shall build. Now, th there you have it. They're, they're talking about the evolution of the soul over time, vast stretches of time, and they're talking about karma, how you can stop that evolution and you have to go back and work on it. And those things, of course, they require lots of time, and they, they require lots of time in the same type of environment. And to corroborate that, the Orangia book talks about these, these uh, seven circles of psychic development. And for some reason, it lists them in reverse order. So you start out at level seven, and you're working your way down to one. And um, they, they're listed in terms of these these stages, and you really have to master each stage. That's, and that's, that's the Betty book, like, complements it perfectly. It started talking about how once you reach a new stage of your development, you have to master that stage. You have to flesh it out and get... And so not only do you have to make the right decision in one context, you have to do this over and over again until it becomes old hat. And you're, so you're really building yourself. You're really building this soul. And that completely echoes with some of the things the Arantia book says, let me try to pull those out here. <clears throat> so in the Arantia book on page 340, there's a section on ascending mortals. And then it talks about in page 341, I, I'm like... Probably have to edit this. Because basically I was finding two things. I was finding things that are very similar. And then, of course, since the Arantia book is against reincarnation, I was finding things that are different. Uh, but what was really similar, I, I guess I won't go over every single example. It's just going to take too long. But I compiled this whole list of all these examples in, uh, in uh, the Arantia book where it's talking about the evolution of the soul. It's talking about these seven psychic circles that you've got to reach. It's talking about how you've got to reach basically this third level, you know, from seven down to three, and you've got to get to level three before you can even go on to these mansion worlds. And the implication is, if you read it, that there's a lot of evolution that has to take over a long period of time, but then you're stuck with this thing in the Arantia book where it all has to happen in one lifetime. And it, th what I'm trying to get at here is it just doesn't make sense, okay? It's portraying something that's vital for you to, a stage that is vital for your reach. It's going to take a long time for most people to get there. And yet, 
you don't have the time to do it. And then what does it say if you haven't reached that third level? Well, then it says you, uh, you get adjudicated and you may be judged good enough to go on to these mansion worlds, uh, these higher spheres where you learn. Or you may just have to wait for the next dispensational roll call. And the book has either been edited to say, or it does flat out say, that while you're waiting, you have no consciousness. You can't communicate with loved ones back at home. You can't do anything. And I was like, well, look, if, if you've got to do all this work, if you've got to progress, and if this, this earth is an, ideal, is an ideal environment for you to do that work at those levels, those earlier levels, why wouldn't you come back? I mean, it would almost have to be set up so you could, or at least go to another sphere that was similar so you could learn those similar things, you know, those rudimental lessons. And if you read the other psychic sources, they say, well, and even, even here, you know, they're saying that's, that's what we do. You do keep coming back. And it does require a long period of time. So as far as the, uh, again, as far as the reincarnation thing, the Arantia book kind of falls flat on its face. But there's some peculiarities. Like, like I said before, on this page 340, they have an ex a section on the ascending mortals. Okay? And the very first one is our first step, which is on these planetary worlds. But that section is like one little tiny paragraph that doesn't even seem to make very much sense. And then you have much more fleshed out paragraphs that are like two-thirds of a page to a page long or more about these other types. And, and, and you're, you're left thinking, no, wait a second. Uh, you know, wouldn't the part about our first step that we're in right now be the most relevant, you know, to, to really spend some time on? And furthermore, when it talks about these seven circles of psychic development in the Arantia book, it only ends up talking about levels seven, three, and one. And then it starts talking about levels two, level six, and stuff, as if you're supposed to know what, it's, what they are. And, and it really just reeks of something that was fleshed out, where all seven levels were described, but the steps have to do with psychic development. You know, those are like the, possibly the milestones separating, separating those levels. And if someone's trying to take all the psychic stuff out and paranormal stuff out of the Arantia book, well, then it may have just been too much of a mess. They may have had to just take those things out or... I don't know, but there's another peculiar spot in there where the author of the particular section that has to do with, with death and what happens around the transition um, to, to the next step, he says he's not allowed to reveal everything. The quote is this. This is on section 112, subsection, paper 112, section 5, Paragraph 11. Hopefully I'll have enough time to quote it here. He says, this is the author speaking. There are two difficulties that hamper my efforts to explain just what happens to you in death. The surviving you, which is distinct from the departing adjuster, which is the higher self. One of these consists in the impossibility of conveying to your level of comprehension an adequate description of a transaction on the borderland of the physical and Morantia, which is the next the astral plane, the, those realms. The other problem is brought about by the restrictions placed upon my commission as a re revelator of truth by the celestial governing authorities of Urantia. There are many interesting details which might be presented, but I withhold them upon the advice of your immediate planetary supervisors. And I'm thinking, hmm, is reincarnation one of those things? Is communication with, with people back at home one of those things? I mean, you know... So I guess we're left with two kind of things with this discrepancy about reincarnation in the Urantia book. Either it was altered maliciously, or perhaps, the, uh, indeed, the authors weren't allowed, or it was strongly suggested that they not reveal those portions for some reason. It just seems odd, because at the very same time this was apparently being channeled, Casey was channeling reading after reading after reading, dealing specifically with reincarnation. So... What do we make of that? But anyway, I just thought it was very interesting and uh, thought I would mention it. Until next time, carry on.